This video is brought to you by my awesome sponsors. Make sure to check out the affiliate links in the description below. Thanks again for all the support. Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to yet another Need for Speed Unbound video. Today I wanted to take a moment to talk about something I don't really think many people have talked much about since the release of Need for Speed Unbound. I think it's something that is quite important in selling the immersion with your environment. You're selling the immersion that you have with the game. And weirdly enough, it's the people. And I want to talk about this from a couple of different angles. I want to talk about it from the physical objects on the map to even like the character development as far as like the characters that do the voice acting and the characters that you regularly interact with in the game. Because I think the two of them together really have a huge impact as a difference to what previous Need for Speed games had to offer. So for instance, we can actually do a little bit of people watching here. We can see that, you know, there are a couple of people, uh, it looks like they have the same character models, but yet you can tell they're really uniquely different because you've got this guy over here who's just like speed walking to his job. You've got like a formal businesswoman also like just kind of going along. Then you've got like a copy of that guy earlier. It's just like really moseying along. You've got these construction workers right here that are just kind of chilling, just kind of talking with one another. I think these tiny details are incredible because it, I don't think it takes a whole lot of programming to, to make this happen. But I mean, we can even see some of the same characters earlier. They're now looping around. I can probably imagine that the program is that they just walking around a circle, sure. But I mean, it's super cool that we can like do people watching here and we can like see the you only know, couple people over the, by the bench that are talking about. and. And of course, since there are people, then there's, yeah, some of the program with getting the people out of the way isn't like the best, but I mean, it is somewhat interactive in that way, which I think it is really cool for that to be put into this game. I did want to just briefly play a bunch of the other old games to kind of get like a sense of, you know, where the pedestrians were and how they'd interact and whatnot. But the way that they interact with the environment is very different to how the characters and uh, the pedestrians interact in Need for Speed Unbound. We are approaching a very, what I would say, uh, interesting populated area. And there's like nothing. Perhaps I was a little bit too hard on Need for Speed Heat. So there are actually people in Need for Speed Heat. It turns out that they are very localized, however, where it's to this one little block here at the very beginning of the race. But when we get any further out past that, I mean, complete emptiness. Need for speed payback. There are some crowds at the beginning of some missions. Um, and as like I've said before, in heat, we'll uh, get more out into the environment and make that realization that it once again, yeah, there's nothing out here. Need for Speed 2015, not even at the beginning of events. There is not a soul to be found. And again, it's more foreshadowing of the COVID lockdown world. So here we are in Need for Speed Rivals, and we're kind of by the coastal area, yet another what should be populated area. It's got boats now. That's different. That's cool. The car went by over there. All right, Need for Speed Most Wanted 2012. We're in a Central Park area. And to no one's surprise, you can guess what I'm going to say. More Baron. So back to Unbound. No, the amount of pedestrians in a given environment does not equate to a better game. No, that's not at all what I'm getting at. What I'm trying to get at here is I'm surprised that us as in Need for Speed fans have accepted 
the same st style of thinking, the same style of thought processes for so long that we've just kind of accepted, hey, you know, we only care about the pretty environment and that there's a couple of traffic cars on the road. But as far as like immersion to the environment in which that we race in, apparently we don't care. Like, we don't care that there's a world that's living and breathing. We don't care that about any of that, which I find really surprising because ever since Unbound came out, it kind of destroyed my thought process of how an environment in a racing game should interact with the player. And we've accepted this kind of status quo of there doesn't need to be anything. And as long as the cars are fast and the graphics are good, we should be fine, right? And about has said, hey, you know, we have the technology to have insane levels of detail now. Why haven't we been pushing it for so long before? I mean, at least need, uh, at least even Forza, for example, uh, Forza Horizon for ever and motorsport has always said you know we gotta include people and yes in horizon kind of in the same vein as need for speed like you'll get them at certain event beginnings and you'll get them at the horizon festivals but it's just really weird how us as the racing community haven't ever you know taken a step back and said hey what if what if we include like people in our world, it's a little bit more, uh, a little bit more interactive, versus just them being off to the sidelines, just watching the race. Why don't we put them on the sidewalks? Why can't we, you know, do this, that, the other thing? And yes, of course, I'm, I'm kind of rambling at this moment, but there have been games previously that have done this that I'm overlooking. But this is main, mainly in regards to the Need for Speed franchise. So. Long story short, I am really glad that, you know, Criterion have come out of the gate swinging, thinking, hey, how can we think outside of the box? What are some things that we've done for years that it's time that we change, that we try thinking differently, doing differently, uh, playing differently? So I, I really, really enjoy that. And part two of my video here. So we've got the actual physical objects on the environment that you're driving around with and whatnot. So yes, we've got the people. But the other thing that I wanted to discuss here as well is the characters. So with many Need for Speed games, since day one, whenever there's been a character involved, it's been over the top, it's been cringy, it's been cheesy, it's been cliche, it's been all sorts of words, and pretty much every Need for Speed game has always struggled with that, and even to Unbound, to an extent. But as far as modern day Need for Speed games go, I have honestly struggled to find any other Need for Speed game that gives me the sense of character development, the sense of appreciation and just loving of the characters that we find in Unbound. And I know that's going to be a controversial statement because a lot of you are going to say like, well, maybe I enjoyed Mac in Payback. Maybe I enjoyed, uh, I don't know, maybe enjoyed Anna and whatnot in Heat or you know, and appreciate like uh, Sergeant Straws or whatever, Captain Commander Straws, uh, Shaws, sorry, Shaws, uh, kind of development there. And yes, I, I will admit that, you know, Shaw was a kind of a cool character where it's like, okay, so here's like a corrupt cop. You know, how does he fall from grace even further? You know, how does he come towards justice? And why I say all this is that I have loved, absolutely loved characters like Rydell and Tess in this game, where Rydell is your you know, standard millennial who you know struggles with technology, but he's got a huge heart. And you can tell he's been around the block a couple of times. And Tess is, yeah, 
annoying at times, I'll admit, but I love her personality of, like, being a foodie. Like, have you ever thought of a Need for Speed game that involves, like, a foodie? Like, no, it's, it's fun because the characters, like, they're real. They're, they're written in a way that they're relatable, that they have, you know, their struggles, their doubts, their passions, their quirks, and I love all of that. I really do. And the thing that I also really love, too, is that while you are, you know, in the waiting or when you get to your meetups and whatnot in the story modes where you can take a look at these, the, your rivals' bios, and yeah, you'll get little quips of you know, your standard racing game kind of dialogue of, oh, I'm going to beat you. Oh, I can't believe you. You're in last place or, you know, all the rest of that. But I've loved immensely how they've got such diversity and such interesting, uh, you know, backgrounds. And I love being able to, even the rivals, you can take a look at and you can read up on them. And they're not just a, some random name. Most racing games, so with when you're racing against these rivals, you'll see a name, you'll see a car, maybe hear a voice line here too. And that's it. But being able to add these individuals here, give them personality, give them backgrounds, give them stories. I mean, I, I do like that. I really do. And I especially enjoy, like I said, the diversity where you have not many video games to include trans characters. Oh, I shouldn't say characters. Not many video games include trans people. And it's such, I don't know why it's so controversial to include people of different backgrounds and of different walks of life in video games. Like, I don't understand why every single character has to be a straight white male. And as I honestly kind of hate it. So the fact that they included trans people is awesome because it gives them a person to relate to. It gives people... The idea of being able to include people of all walks of life gives people to someone to relate to and creates that deeper connection that you get with your fan base. It, it makes people's voices feel heard. And I love that. I love that. I love that. I love that. So Criterion, kudos to you guys. Like I, I appreciate how much you're thinking ahead and yeah, people call it progressive or woke or whatever, but diversity is the future. I don't care how you cut it. It's just that is where we are headed as a society. It's just a very diverse future where there are a lot of different differing opinions. So, I mean, it's just... Ugh. But as an aside to all of that, I actually loved uh, Tess's and um, Rydell's character so much that it turned out that when he posted a video on Twitter that the actual voice actors decided to start tweeting at me about you know how much they appreciated my one of my Need for Speed Unbound uh, reviews that I made earlier. So, and, and that's that's the other really cool fun thing is that you know even though you'll say oh it's just a voice actor or whatever. It's a whole ass person behind that voice. It's a whole person that takes so much time and energy to listen to the directors and the producers wants and desires to really evoke the emotion that they want and give a good personality to these characters that are otherwise just words on a piece of paper. So, you know, shout out to Dwayne and shout out to Jennifer. It's been awesome to be able to talk to you guys on Twitter. And, and please, if you guys haven't already, you know, tweet at them. Just say hi. You know, say thanks or don't. I don't care. <laughs> it's just, it's just so weird that people are so approachable nowadays. Where it's just like, hey, I can just, I can tweet at people, people that I never thought I'd be able to just interact with. They're just a couple of keyboard types away. It's pretty cool. So yeah, that last uh, point that I was trying to make got a little bit uh, convoluted here, but long story short, in my opinion, I think Need for Speed Unbound's uh, characters as far as ones that you interact with are the most realistic, and I've 
I find the, the most interesting. I mean, the characters of previous games, it just seemed like that they're really poorly written in my mind, or, you know, perhaps the voice actors who have done a great job attempting to bring, you know, writers' visions to, to life. But I think they just haven't really... They're not realistic and they're too cliche and the rest of it. So that's why I love Unbound. It's, it seems like the writers at times, yeah, I have done cringy things in this game. Uh, but overall, I've really done the research and kind of let the voice actors say, hey, you know, make this the most realistic, you know, give it the most motion, give it the most, you know, realism that you can. And, and I love this game for it. So, yeah, and that is my kind of thought process and my observations on this game when it comes to literally just people and environment so if you guys enjoyed this video make sure to like comment and subscribe could always use some more around here again i want to thank you all for subscribing so far this past month has been absolutely mind-blowing in my mind getting like over 100 subscribers in a month where it took me a year to get 100 so i am just blown away by by all that i am just absolutely humbled so thank you so much for subscribing I'm going to try to keep this high level, high quality of content coming your guys' way. So stay tuned for all that. Again, thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys have a great day today. Take care. Bye.